Yes, yes, Kenya. Tamu sana, tamu sana, tamu sana, yes. Charlene Ruto has taken a U-turn on some remarks he made that have been going viral since yesterday. Before we have a look at Charlene's U-turn, let's listen once more to Charlene Ruto. Today's so before again I continue, I wanted to introduce quickly my team from Kenya. So I'll start with the back. So this is Mike Sagana. Um, he's one of my team members. Uh, he's a politician <laughs> and he's my principal advisor in my team. And uh, this is Jermaine Momani. He's the head of trade and investments at the office of the first daughter. And this is... This is, I don't get what's funny. From those remarks, Charlene Ruto is confirming she has an office of the first daughter. And she's going ahead to reveal some of her staff in the office. That video has been trending since yesterday. And in our yesterday's analysis, we dwelt on it in details. In this video, I want us to have a look at Charlene Ruto's press release today denying that her office is being funded by the taxpayers' money. Charlene Ruto, for immediate release, the office of the first daughter is a private entity. It is neither a constitutional office nor is it being funded by Kenyan taxpayers. The office runs to purely facilitate the activities of and any programs being run by Ms. Charlene Ruto. Through its independent structure and facilitators, the office has engaged various players across the country and beyond in line with some of its objectives of championing youth-based agendas and climate change advocacy. The office of the first daughter has at all times acted in good faith to ensure that Kenyan youth have a voice and get access to opportunities to enable sustainable livelihoods. That's Charlene Ruto's press release today. She's making a U-turn from her remarks that have been trending since yesterday. Her remarks yesterday created an impression, a perception that the office is being funded by taxpayers. In this video, I want us to dig deep into this story to understand the story behind the story, the truth behind what Charlene Ruto is actually saying in this press release. If you are watching us, but you have not yet subscribed, kindly subscribe, give this video a like. If you dig deep into this story, chances are very high this office is being funded by taxpayers' money. Chances are very high. Or alternatively, Charlene Ruto might be a rogue child taking advantage of the father being the president to mobilize funds through this office. And that office, in my honest opinion, can be a very good avenue for corruption. We are some government, senior government officials and even county officials or even individuals who want to get tenders or to reach a father can be funding this office for those kinds of privileges. So this office can be a very good conduit or rather can be a conduit for corruption. And just as I did state in our yesterday's analysis, 
I'm seeing William Ruto as the president. He might be biting more than he can chew. The mere fact that William Ruto as the president cannot call her daughter to order. That proves it to me that everything Shalin Ruto might, might be doing, or rather is doing, might be having the blessings from the father. And just as I did indicate yesterday, I'm seeing a very high possibility where already William Ruto is preparing Shalin Ruto to take after him. And that's not far-fetched. It might be possible. William Ruto is already preparing her daughter to succeed him. Yes, to succeed him. If you look at the kind and style of politics William Ruto is playing, I'm not ruling out that possibility. So in the long run, in my honest opinion, we are going to see corruption in this government actually increasing. According to Auditor General's report, Kenya has been losing about third of its annual budget to corruption. In a budget of $3 trillion, like last time we had a budget of about $3 trillion, $1 trillion disappears into men and women's pockets. That has been the figures. In William Ruto's government, most likely this figure might go up because the money in this case that is being used to fund some offices like this of Shalin Ruto, these are money in my honest opinion, amounts that are not being accounted for. Mm. And you might find that a lot of money is just disappearing through such conduits. And from where I see it, that's a form of corruption and it should not be tolerated. If you look at it from another angle, I now fully agree with Uru Kenyatta. I'm seeing Uru Kenyatta's prophecy coming to fulfillment. Uhuru made it very clear when he was leaving office that Kenyans will remember him. <laughs> yes, Kenyans will remember him after maybe three months. And we are already seeing some very interesting happenings in this government. Hmm. Very interesting happenings in the government. And looking at the future, I'm not seeing things improving. Things are only going to get worse in this government. And that's why I still maintain here that William Root is biting more than he can chew. These are things, or rather these are political maneuvers that can just lead to a rebellion. And uh, to add, to, or rather to add salt into injury, the same, same government is saying it's broke. And we have seen some subsidies that the previous governments actually were helping or rather to cushion Kenyans with. William Ruto's government has removed such subsidies. And Central Bank also just announced that come January, they might reinstate some other charges that Uhuru Kenyatta's government had wavered, wavered as a result of the COVID. Come January, such charges might actually come back. Maybe transferring money from your bank to M-Pesa can now, the charges can be reinstated. And already, school fees come next year. There are also indications school fees might also go up. So you are seeing this is a government that is clearly oppressing the common man. And at the same time, you are seeing the government trying to please and even create some unconstitutional offices, just like this one of Shalin Ruto. So as I conclude, I believe strongly William Ruto's government is on a wrong path. Is on a wrong path. And if things continue this way, then it's almost certain and very clear this is a government that is going to face a rebellion, a revolution 
very, very soon. And this is why, again, I always maintain here that this is a government that might go down in history as the most unpopular government since independence. It's just about 100 days in office. And you are seeing clearly for yourself that this is a failing government. Mm -hmm. In fact, from their scorecard, almost on all the things they promised, they are not delivering on anything. What we are seeing day after day are things that are just shocking Kenyans more. Yes. Things shocking Kenyans more. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. Just as I did indicate eh, when we were starting, if you are watching us for the very first time, subscribe, give this video a like. If you are watching us and you feel you want to support us here, I have pinned my number on the comment section. Contact me through the number or feel free to channel your support to the number. Let's meet in our next analysis. Thank you.